Welcome back guys, we're not at the shop today. Monday morning on my way in and I just picked up this 50 Chevy pickup last night and I'm unloading it right now, but I noticed I've been picking up a few more subscribers on the weekends and stuff and I really appreciate that. I just wanted to kind of get on a little more personal level today and maybe explain a few things. I am a one man shop. It is kind of hard for me to take some of these videos uh, and find the time to edit them and all that stuff, but I'm gonna keep going with it and see what we can get done. The twin superchargers is probably one of the biggest things going on right now, and I we've got big plans for that. We wanna get that thing done within the next month or two here and get it in the car running and see if we can get it to do burnouts without exploding, and then maybe we'll go down to an event uh, in the next upcoming couple of months with that car, and maybe melt a set of tires off. But I guess as for today, um, I figured we get a little more personal. I'll show you some of my stuff laying around and some of the upcoming projects and just get out of the shop. It's nice out. It's 30 degrees this morning. So take a look over here in the barnyard and here's some of my older stuff sitting out here. There's an 80 Sun Pontiac Sunbird over there, 53 Ford sedan that I got for the girlfriend. That's a Western car, came from Wyoming. There is a 50 International sitting there. That's one of my friend's cars. We already got it stubbed out in the front end with a S10 stub and oh, we got the four link in the back of it too I forgot we even did that but yeah there's a four link in the back and we were working on that a little bit it's been sitting there for a while now though I do have another 50 Chevy over there with a nine foot box and the future plans on that one are diesel power put a Cummins in it and I got a four-wheel drive uh, utility truck that someone bought for the body and I'm waiting on getting my engine and trans back it was a five-speed stick 12 valve Cummins um, and I got some narrower Ford axles for it that'll fit a lot better under this truck and we're gonna make all that stuff work in there but before I do that I've been collecting some more of these cabs because not only do I want to make it four-wheel drive Cummins powered I also want to add another cab on the back and make it a crew cab and hopefully that's something I could get into in the next year or two but as you guys can kind of tell I start a lot of things and don't carry on with them cuz it's a one-man show it's kind of hard to kind of hard to do everything so I guess that's those if anyone was wondering what happened to the all-wheel drive Coronet Hemi project that's sitting up behind the snowbank there hell let's walk up there and see if it starts I haven't started it all winter battery might be dead and there's a mountain of snow to climb over I'll walk around this way. Out in the back there's a few more remnants pieces of a Model A coupe and another 50 Chevy cab. That's probably going to be the one that I cut up to do the do the four-door conversion on that one over there. But here's the 2008 Hemi-powered Jeep chassis Coronet. I haven't been up here in a while. Let's see if it's got juice. Nope, stone dead. I guess we won't be starting that this morning. But, like I said, I have a few videos on this. Uh, and as you can see over there, there's some mice in here chewing on the insulation and over here. So that'll be something fun to clean up when the weather gets a little nicer. But if you haven't seen it, it's basically how it laid out and that's where it's at right now. It does run and drive and everything, but got some metal work to do yet I think this side is the side I yeah I got a rocker made for this side in the rear quarter panel section and basically that's where I left off maybe we'll get that back out when the weather's a little nicer and finish her up other than that let's go unload this truck off the trailer and maybe go take a look at a few more of my projects and vehicles that I have stored at some point we might put a not might at some point I think I'm gonna put a V8 in this Ranger over here this summer just for something to beat on and maybe do a few fun experiments with we have some ideas coming up for maybe some alternative methods of forced air induction but you'll have to wait and see if we come up with that one Anyway, I'm going to set you guys down and unload this thing off the trailer and we'll go take a look at a few more projects. Uh -huh. 
that work? Well, that worked out pretty well. I actually had this thing running last night. The fuel pump wasn't, well, I gotta get a gas can, but the fuel pump wasn't pumping either. So uh, maybe we'll mess around with this a little more and see if we can drive it around the yard. That other one, that nine foot box one does actually run and drive, but the clutch, uh, clutch is smoking it. Once it warms up, the thing won't really move. I'm gonna grab this hood out of the back of the brown truck and fire it on there so if it snows out, it's not going in the engine and whatnot. I got the doors for that thing in the garage too. I think we'll bolt them on there at some point coming up too. Otherwise the cats and stuff tend to go inside and mice, all well, the mice are gonna get in either way, but raccoons and stuff and tear the shit out of whatever is left of the interior. Take a look in here real quick. So this year was kind of a mild winter around here and we really didn't get any ice races in. Um, some of the first videos I made were on ice racing and I guess as a one-man show it's kind of hard to make a quality video on that and get enough commentary in but if you watch any of those this is my 52 Studebaker Commander. Got everything out, had my tires ready to go and stuff but like I said we had one race this year it was a double header and I didn't even bother taking this one out we just helped run the show. So that sits in the garage at home. This over here I got from a friend a long time ago they put a four-wheeler engine under this thing and they put dually dually rear tires on it welded some rims together and stuff and it ran and stuff but it was underpowered and I ended up changing it up a little bit it was a three-wheeled like I said Harley golf cart and I put a Yamaha um, fork setup off a motorcycle in the front stretched the front end all out this was only about that far in front of this before but I stretched everything out got a disc brake in the front so hopefully we can hold ourselves when we you know try to do a big burnout on the thing got a drag link running over and basically made a whole steering column here and put the Yamaha handlebars on top so I'll have my clutch and brake on the top I could probably put a rear brake down on the floor with a pedal of some kind at some point um, but that's all kind of figured out I had all the wiring hooked up on it the other day and Realized when I got that motorcycle I didn't have a CDI box or a voltage regulator so I got that stuff thanks to eBay the other day and I think when we do a first startup on this thing I'll bring you guys along for that. The funny thing about that was it was a 80 I believe Yamaha Maxim motorcycle and the guy I got it from thought it was a 400cc and I just realized when I went to order these voltage regulator uh, regulator and um, CDI box that well it wasn't a 400 it's a 700 cc so basically you're looking at 700 cc's of power in a three-wheeled uh, Harley Davidson golf cart and I guess the only thing I'm really worried about at this point is the rear end actually holding up because that thing's out of a I don't know 80 cc four-wheeler so we might end up doing something different in the back here at some point. I have a feeling that that whole differential is going to rip right out. Because I do believe there's only, mm, I'm thinking six, eight millimeter bolts holding that whole center section to the chassis in this thing. And the bearings do have some play too. So regardless, we're going to get this thing fired up, go out in the yard and dump the clutch and see if it shatters the rear end or if it stands up and flips over backwards. I'm not sure. Anyway, we got some work to do today. I'm gonna start making my way close. Oh, here, let's take a look at these too. This is a 68 Norton Atlas I got when I was probably 21, 20 years old, something like that. Uh, I drove this thing quite a bit back back then, I guess it was over 10 years ago now, but probably had about two, 3,000 miles on it, and then I finally got some Amol carbs. I was running Makunis on it, and I got the correct Amol carbs for a for a Norton Atlas and put them on one spring and one of the main bearings started whining a little bit on it so basically I got all my engine parts cleaned and put in the box and never reassembled that one. This over here is a Trophy Trail 500 uh, Triumph. I'd be lying if I told you the year. I think 74 or something like that. But that has a brand new motor on it. It's never been fired and the guy I know he passed away now gave it to me before he before he died and uh, he used to flat track race this bike which is pretty cool it's got some history on it got knobby tires on it front and back it's got the oily frame the right in front of the gas tank there you can see this little cap right there the oil actually is in the frame of the bike 
that feeds and cycles through the engine and back up into the frame and then you got your split aluminum tank on it and all that stuff but maybe we'll mess around with that stuff more when summer rolls around anyway let's go make one more stop so really one of the reasons I'm making this video today is just to let you guys know that um, well I'm still here I guess I don't really have a lot of time to be putting out a lot of content it's just really nice out this morning and I decided that's a snowmobile trail just decided to show you guys around and, and I guess show you a little more in depth of what I have and what maybe some of the upcoming projects could be and will be like I said before winter is kind of a bad time to be out doing stuff I mean we're not racing we didn't have ice races so there, we didn't have any footage of that really or I didn't anyway it's I always like running that Studebaker but like I said too I'm a one-man show so it's kind of hard to really make a good content video out of that but uh, projects we got plenty of those at the shop I think right now when we get there today well project Hank is still on the hoist I got the exhaust on it stainless steel eBay stuff and I got a video on that that'll come out soon um, and that's getting pretty close to being wrapped up and then we're gonna move on and I think I'm gonna hammer that Mustang out that's been sitting in the background at the shop since I basically started making YouTube videos I think we're gonna hammer that out and then there's a uh, a 30 Model A Snowbird it's a Model A sedan and it's got the tracks and stuff on it. and I think that I'm probably gonna start working on that this week and make a little progress on that one and get it out to paint and actually I could pray in four days have all the body work tin work welded up on it and, and get it out to paint but I keep doing the projects and when summer rolls around hold on here's a here at Wisconsin roads I don't know if you can see that or not that was a pretty big dip the road caved right in but we're gonna keep going on the projects when summer rolls around we'll, we'll go out and cause a little mayhem and shred some tires and I want to go to a few more events and like I said there's there's one coming up and I want to get those twin eat 90s done and hopefully if the motor doesn't explode the first time we hit the gas down which I don't think it will but we're not building one we're just gonna put it on a stock like I said Vortec motor in one of my last videos I think I explained that but uh, I try to do some more events and stuff and you guys like some of this stuff or have any specific ideas on what you want to see I mean let me know I usually read the comment section and uh, try to help you guys out when I can so this is where I keep some of my other cars and one of my favorites is in here but oh, Jesus Christ I got some parts over here for another 51 I have but oh, actually a 54 Chevy I have at home this here is a uh, Chrysler Cordoba, 76 Chrysler Cordoba. Uh, we, years ago, my buddy had it. Actually, the same guy who gave me that golf cart in my garage had this one. And we ended up putting a set of flat top pistons in a 413 that I had. And I, I shouldn't even show you guys this because it's pretty gross under here. But this thing runs awesome. It does burnouts like a monster. I actually took it to a spectator eliminator race this last summer. And there wasn't really anyone there to compete with. But... Um, I ended up winning it that was kind of cool with this big old land yacht and I think one of the projects for this year is well first of all the pinions kind of making some noise in it probably gonna change out the rear end or do something along those lines and try to give this thing a diet there's a lot of weight in this thing that a guy could strip out so that's something coming up for the for the springtime this is another project for the shop but we'll get into that when that gets down there um, it does have a 6 OLS in it and it needs a lot of work done on it. I didn't touch this one yet. Someone else did it, and it's going to need some help. This here is one of my favorite cars I've ever had. When I was uh, 18, 19 years old, I cut all the floors out of this four-door Euro Lumina. It was my cousin's car, and I put an S10 frame under it. And it's, it's, it's a small block. It's a rear-wheel drive. I basically had a mod motor in it. It's got big dome pistons and stuff. And the fastest I ever really ran with it at the strip was 13.6, but that was with a stock converter. And I ended up getting a 3500 stall converter in it. And shortly thereafter, I ran a spectator race in it on the dirt track. And we got out into town, and the radiator exploded. And come to find out, it um, had a, a cylinder washed out. It's a 60 over motor and had a pinhole in one of the cylinders. But this car has been through a lot, a lot of races with it good times with friends and stuff we all ran spectator years ago and maybe at some point we'll pull the motor out of here again this year and get it reblocked I actually did reblock it I kind of neglected to mention that when the cylinder wall washed out the first time I had another block punched 
had everything rebalanced, had everything redone, re-ringed it, re-bearing it, and I fired it up and made one trip around the block and it blew that block wall out too. So I don't know if I'm gonna end up buying a new block for it or what, but a lot of these old blocks laying around, they're, they're just no good anymore. They're getting rotten in the coolant jackets and uh, you know, you punch them 60 over and you got paper thin, paper thin walls and stuff and when you got high compression or any compression for that matter, I mean that that's really not going to last long if you got a light spot in the cylinder wall, but you know, pop the hood. I haven't looked under here in probably two or three years. That's two years for sure. But that's how that sits. Engine sits high and back. The distributor is actually under the windshield there. Did a lot of carving on it to make that work. Got some modified headers on it. They just go uh, back and straight down. This would be a perfect turbo car. And I, I might even do that. I do have a twin turbo set up for a, for a LS. And maybe we'll end up putting that in here this year. I'm not sure yet, but like I said, one man show and a lot of, a lot of projects going on. Let's take a walk around the backside. I'll show you a few more. All right, well, we got a few more up here I can show you guys yet that I've collected over the years. This is actually a Dakota chassis my uncle stripped down. It runs and drives. He wanted to try to maybe put a body over it, kind of like I did my Coronet. Um, this right here, a 38 Dodge pickup, was one of the first old cars I ever bought. And I recently sold it to my uncle, so that's going to be one of his projects. This one here, uh, that's a Chevy sedan from a gentleman that kind of was on the holding pattern. We're just storing it here now, but that one's going to be coming to the shop probably this fall to finish up. It's going to be all original, but he did a hopped up engine with, I think, uh, two or three carburetors on it, an inline six. So we'll be messing with that one too. This is my buddy's uh, 47 Pontiac Silver Streak. This here is a 64 Oldsmobile Starfire I got from my uncle years ago. And as you can see up there, I don't, really don't want to climb in there, but the front end is kind of buckled up. Well, that's because the frame snapped at the firewall and went straight up. So the car is actually in relatively nice shape. But I'm gonna have to build a complete chassis for it one day and I think that would be kind of cool to maybe build a full tube chassis for it or something, tub it out, kind of do Pro Street and maybe put a, I'll well, probably do LS or something, maybe twin turbos or something crazy like that. Be a perfect donor for that. Um, this is the engine out of it, sitting here on the cart. And various other bodies and stuff I've had collected over the year. That is kind of a cool car and I might, I might pull that out this year. That's a 27 Essex two-door sedan, and they're, they're almost like the old Chevys where everything was wood inside, nailed together, and basically that thing looked like a full car on the way home, and I stopped about 15 times on the highway and kept cranking the ratchet straps tighter because the panels just kept, all the nails kept shearing, and it just kept basically falling inside the car, so. But that'd be a pretty cool different sedan to build. That's a crappy uh, 36 Chevy cab, I, I think 36 maybe 37 or 8, I'm not sure, but that was laying in a ditch somewhere out in the woods and you can see up here the roof is rotten because that's where it was laying. And got a Model T Coupe here, 32 Ford cab, an old T cab sitting here. Got a firewall off of one of the step-in T buckets that's laying around here somewhere too, but so as you can tell I have the addiction like most car guys do, biting off more than you can chew. Some guys aren't like that, but a lot of us like to collect and pile stuff up and, you know, kind of drive ourselves nuts and start 10 projects at a time, and I guess that's who I am. This, uh, that's the last car I have to show you guys. This is a 53 Chevy that we got from Moorcroft, Wyoming, and it's a pretty awesome car. And this one we're going to end up turning into a gasser at some point, so... That's about it. That pretty much sums up the cars and projects that I've collected over the years. I guess the only ones we really didn't cover today were uh, the twin superchargers, which I've had videos on them, and the um, Iron Duke supercharged T bucket, which I have some other videos on that too if you want to check those out if you haven't already. So, um, appreciate you guys uh, subscribing to the channel and liking it. It shows me that there's some guys out there with interest in it. And I'm going to keep it coming. I guess for the meanwhile, we're just going to be doing some projects at the shop and whatnot. But when the weather starts getting warmer and stuff like that, we'll, we'll start getting some of the other cars out. Hopefully we can... I don't quite know what I'm going to do with my Lumina. That was the car we used to 
race uh, spectator eliminator with a lot and that was the car the only car that I've ever taken to Kakano to make passes in and like I said it I never ran anything under a 13.6 in that car um, but I know it would have been a lot better than that with the stall and everything I had done to it. So either we're going to rebuild the engine that's in it now, or I have a twin turbo set up for an LS. I think maybe that's going to be something we're going to do this summer. After the twin blowers are done, I think maybe maybe we'll just put the 5.3 LS in that Lumina and get the twin turbos on it. It's going to go a lot faster than 13.6 at the track, assuming it doesn't blow up. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing. Hit that like button for me. and. Help me keep the videos coming. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Till next time.